Many people believe that thousands of years ago, even before recorded history, there were extraterrestrial beings, including the Anunnaki species, who came to Earth with the purpose of mining gold. Many archaeologists from around the world view present-day Iraq as the cradle of civilization. The Tigris and Euphrates rivers are the land where the Sumerian people thrived from around 3500 to 1900 BCE. They were the first to build truly urbanized cities, organize a system of grid streets and drainage networks, and use limestone for paving sidewalks. They also had knowledge of agriculture and invented the cuneiform writing system on clay tablets. The level of civilization of the Sumerians far surpasses our understanding of that era, developing elements such as writing, cities, metals, and making significant advancements in various fields such as social organization, religion, agriculture, military, and finance. According to ancient astronaut researchers, the Anunnaki are believed to have passed down this knowledge to the Sumerians. The Anunnaki, according to ancient Mesopotamian mythology, were a group of deities who played a significant role in the religious beliefs of the Sumerians, Akkadians, and Babylonians. The Sumerians revered the Anunnaki as gods, but were forbidden from seeing their true forms, thus describing them as humanoid beings. As the Sumerian civilization faded, it was succeeded by the Akkadians, and later, the Babylonians, whose religions transitioned to monotheistic beliefs like Zoroastrianism and Christianity. The true appearance of the Anunnaki remains uncertain and largely speculative. According to Middle Eastern mythology, they may have resembled humans but were often depicted as taller. The Anunnaki were believed to possess advanced intelligence, with some considering them a highly evolved species. Their language, uns per Sumerian mythologue, was thought to be the precursor to the Sumerian language, and some even suggested a connection to the Hungarian language. In modern linguistic studies, scholars have noted similarities between the Sumerian and Hungarian languages. The Hungarian people are sometimes theorized to be descendants of exiled Sumerians, with many Hungarian cultural legends relating to Anunnaki mythology. Additionally, the Mansi and Kanti peoples, also part of the Ugric language family like the Hungarians, have been speculated to have Sumerian roots. Some evidence also points to a connection between the Sumerian language and the Semitic languages, particularly those used by the Akkadians in ancient Iraq. Today, when researching the Sumerian civilization and the Anunnaki, one often encounters the controversial works of author Zechariah Sitchin. Despite the debates surrounding Sitchin's interpretations, his writings have contributed to the ongoing fascination with ancient Mesopotamian history and the enigmatic Anunnaki. In 1976, author Sitchin published his personal translations describing an extraterrestrial humanoid species called the Anunnaki, who purportedly visited Earth in search of gold. He hypothesized that in the past, extraterrestrial beings came to Earth because their planet required gold to sustain itself. Their own reserves of gold in space had depleted, so they journeyed to Earth to find and retrieve this resource for storage. But why is gold so important? On Earth, Gold is a crucial natural resource with a wide range of applications. Apart from being used in jewelry, gold is utilized in most electronic devices due to its excellent conductivity. Additionally, its malleability and ductility make it ideal for nanotechnology applications, creating superior technological devices for modern convenience. Furthermore, gold can serve as an energy source due to its thermoelectric properties capable of being heated to directly convert energy into electricity. It is clean and efficient energy. Gold can also reflect infrared radiation, which is invisible to the human eye, but interacts with us in the form of heat. With these remarkable properties, gold easily becomes a thin, but effective and durable shield. Moreover, gold is indestructible. Ancient civilizations have utilized this material for thousands of years. On their statues and architectural structures, Everything was made of gold or gold-plated, and these artifacts still exist today despite thousands of years of history. 
Sitchin suggested that the Anunnaki came from another planet within the solar system with an elliptical orbit cycle of 3,600 years. In the inscriptions and writings of the Sumerians, there is mention of a planet called Nibiru, a planet within the solar system dubbed Planet X by scientists. Whether this planet is the homeland of the Anunnaki remains unknown. Returning to the previous issue, the Earth's minerals and resources, particularly gold, had depleted hence their arrival to Earth to search for gold and take it back home. According to the ancient extraterrestrial theory, the Anunnaki, genetically modified primitive human beings to create a strong workforce to expedite their gold search. And they created a slave race. According to Zechariah Sitchin, the Adamu were the first modern humans created by the Anunnaki 450,000 years ago. By mixing the DNA genes of the Anunnaki race with those of primitive humans to create a workforce to do their bidding. According to theories of ancient extraterrestrial beings, this is entirely plausible rather than a fabricated story. If one reads the Bible and ancient history carefully, one would ask whether Adam and Eve were genetically modified by the Anunnaki. Comparing the similarities between the Hebrew Bible and what is recorded by the Sumerians, one finds not only similar stories, but also linguistic similarities. Could they originate from a common source? One thing we can know is that Adam in Hebrew means man. As for Adamu in Sumerian, it is the first man, a slave of the Anunnaki. Is there a connection here or just a coincidence of history? Some ancient African civilizations believe that extraterrestrials visited Earth 10,000 years ago. For example, Zulu legends speak of a time when star visitors came to mine gold and other resources. The mineral mines were worked by slave labor created by the first people. Particularly, we can see that the mineral mines in southern Africa have been exploited for hundreds of thousands of years, even longer. So who mined them? Is this evidence of the existence of the Anunnaki? Does it prove Zechariah Sitchin's theory correct? Are the Anunnaki only part of ancient mythology? Or were they actual extraterrestrial beings who visited ancient Earth? In ancient texts, the Anunnaki are often referred to as a group of gods, a name derived from the names of heaven and earth, Anu and Ki, which some interpretations translate as royal bloodline or royal offspring. Some believe that the Anunnaki are the sons and daughters of heaven and earth. However, the most controversial hypothesis is the idea that the Anunnaki were the ancestors who created the Mesopotamian civilization in the Tigris and Euphrates River region, the Middle East. According to this hypothesis, these extraterrestrial beings were responsible for the remarkable advancements of that era, originating from the planet Nibiru, also known as Planet X. In Zechariah Sitchin's book, he argues that the ancient Sumerian civilization was created by the Anunnaki, extraterrestrial beings from the planet Nibiru, the tenth planet in our solar system beyond Neptune. About 450,000 years ago, Due to over-exploitation, Nibiru's atmosphere was severely damaged. Repairing Nibiru's atmosphere required a large amount of gold, but Nibiru had run out of gold to support at this repair. After surveying neighboring planets, they discovered that Earth was rich in gold resources, so they sent an exploration team to Earth and established a base in the Mesopotamian region. Accompanying them to Earth was a slave race called the Yijji. The Yijji were of low status and were forced to work in, in the mines for the Anunnaki. These Yijji endured oppression and hardship, leading to eventual rebellion. These uprisings ultimately failed, with the Anunnaki nearly wiping out the entire Yijji population. With the downfall of the Yijji race, the Anunnaki lost their slave labor force. To find a more efficient workforce, Anu, the ruler of Nibiru, decided to have his son Enki create a new slave species through genetic manipulation. Initially unfamiliar with Earth's creatures, they conducted various experiments, all of which ended in failure. Eventually, they created a creature to their liking based on primitive humanoid creatures, which was the primitive Homo sapiens. Over time, the appearance of Homo sapiens gradually resembled those of the people on Nibiru, and the population of Homo sapiens continued to increase. Some Nibiru women and Homo sapiens bore many hybrid offspring. The genes of these children were not altered, 
They were nearly as tall as the Nibiruans, and their intelligence and abilities were comparable to those of the Dunbiruans. In Sumerian literature, this new species was called the Giants. Subsequently, the Giants began to establish their own dynasties. The first king of this dynasty was named Alulim, recorded in the Sumerian king list. The kings were selected elites, empowered to execute the missions of the Anunnaki. They were a human race with superior genes. The kings and their lineages were trained with advanced education in technology, mathematics, astronomy, etc. However, the records of the Sumerian king list have sparked much controversy in the archaeological community because, according to these records, the ancestor Alulim was said to have descended from the sky, and the eight kings ruled for a total of 240,000 years until the Great Flood occurred. The unusually long dynasty and lifespan have led some to wonder if it is just a myth or legend. However, what is shocking is that after the Great Flood, the lifespans of the kings recorded in the Sumerian king list became progressively shorter, resembling the situation described in many ancient texts. Moreover, some characters in the Sumerian king list have been confirmed by archaeologists, and their reigns have been verified. For example, Gilgamesh, born in 2600 BCE, was revealed to be the son of Lugalbanda and a goddess with supernatural power. Although his reign was very short, his story is still widely told in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Additionally, 16 Sumerian king lists from different periods have been excavated, and their contents are essentially similar, but further affirming their authenticity. Therefore, the kings listed at the beginning of the Sumerian king list may have indeed existed for tens of thousands of years. Some may wonder why the kings listed in the Sumerian king list lived for so long. It's because these rulers were all descendants of the Nibiruans. With the departure of the Nibiruans, the number of gods on earth gradually decreased. Their bloodline continued to dilute, gradually becoming the lifespan of ordinary humans. If the Sumerian king list recorded by the Sumerians is accurate, then it means the Great Flood did exist. However, to this day, there is still much debate about whether the Great Flood existed or not simply because the archaeological community has found no evidence of such a massive flood. But what's interesting is that the Great Flood is a common legend among many cultures around the world, including Greek, Chinese, Maya, and other civilizations. They all have legends of catastrophic floods appearing at different times. If one day the Great Flood is proven to have truly occurred, then what we consider myths today may no longer be myths. So, this is still just a hypothesis that many believe may have actually happened, but there is still no evidence to show that the Anunnaki truly existed or that we were created by them. What do you think about the stories of the Sumerians? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to follow my upcoming videos. Thank you for listening.